medal or something, just to fill in so that the loser of the other semi-final could have some time. I'm, I'm glad we're playing for serious money in this third place match because otherwise they did used to peter out a little bit into, into farce almost. That is true. I can, I can agree with that to an extent. And Scream with the control mage at the top, Possessi on the combo priest. Again, you see the skulking Geist in the hand here for Scream, one of the most essential cards in the matchup if you're looking to lock the game away from the priest. So there is a chance that Possessi tries to rush out the one-cost spells that he has in hand. And this is where both players need to actually stop playing so quickly. Because there's a lot goes on in this game. You've got to decide between your tempo and your combo and all this stuff that happens. And you need to make sure you get your ordering correct and just work things out properly. And it looks like Possessi's already slowed down a little tiny bit. You can't tell, but he did. And the Jakarta <laughs> operative... <laughs> is that your way of saying he hasn't? Oh, no, he has, but yeah. not, 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 not by much. It's one of those things where he's like five seconds slower per turn. Yeah. And if you're remotely talking about what he's making as plays, you just either way can't make sense of it. So let's see if Possessi ends up just going all in on the on the prayer. Because frankly, again, this is one of those, I would say, awful matchups, but it's certainly not an amazing one. Well, where if you go for the mid board without a high health minion, you're going to get absolutely blown out. We've spent the whole day discussing how two Draconian op operatives is good. He's got three. Yeah, and the way the, the, the priest can sometimes win this is just, hey, I, I've got a Jaina. What's up? Yeah, that's also a thing. Um, also, you can just low roll on Dragon's Fury. When you've got five, six minions flooding the board, Dragon's Fury is allowed to miss one of those. It, it, he says. But yeah. I mean, the Blizzard being in the hand means Dragon's yeah. Fury is less efficient right off the get-go on average. So can Possessi get himself a Jaina? But he gets it to that's a bit more late game sustain. A lot of late game sustain. It's hard to kill off the naught ones, but you can't inner fire them if you're really desperate, I guess. And it's a dragon. And it's a dragon. Of course, he's only got seven of them. He doesn't in his have hand. Enough. Yeah. All right, the Geist removes the cheat condition. Now you've got to win fair and square. With Kratos Alchemist. Yeah. Not sure how fair that is. It's pretty fair. Fair enough. Divine Spirit picked up just after he loses his inner fires. Sendragosa just going, you know what? We'll just win by flooding him with legendaries. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to get them, but they're great defense in fairness for the rest of your board, because if he has to AoE them, which you often do, and Sendragosa positions nicely for Meteor for you to get two legendaries. Yeah, he's going to have a lot to do this game scream if he's going to win the game. Because eight eights eat up water elementals. And Scream hasn't even got Jaina yet. We're talking to... It's, <laughs> well, oh! Possessi is playing his opponent's deck. Yeah, and he's playing the good bits of it. It's not like, oh, I've got Doomsayer and Dragon's Fury and Plated Beetle. It's like, no, I've got double Syndragosa. Jaina, come at me, bro. So this deck plays Syndragosa to beat the mirror match. Well, Possessi's playing double Syndragosa in his mirror match. So I think he wants to play this Dustbreaker. <laughs> I like the idea of playing Dustbreaker here. The big reason is you actually have follow-up with it with the Cabal Talon Priest, and it, it essentially protects your board against any type of of crazy push from the opponent. And if they go for Blizzard Doomsayer early, then you can play Syndragosa into it. If you want to, you've got the Master Spell to guarantee even further tempo. Um, I really like flooding the board this turn with, with smaller minions as well, because going into the Jaina turn... That gives you a load of chances to, to make the appropriate numbers happen because your deck isn't built like the mage deck is to really abuse that hero power. It hasn't got the damage stuff. So the way he's getting around this is trying to flood the board. And now he's got to work out if this master spell is worth it. And he thinks it is, I think. I think it almost always is. Crazy Alchemist could have done the trick too, but he's, he's got to keep save it that. to push the face. Divine Spirit here probably coming in handy. He's looking to close the game on the back of his typical gameplay. Now, Frostless Jaina does spawn three sixes, which with Divine Spirit can, you know, on their own, just create that massive health minion that you're mm -hmm. looking for. I mean, we're looking at the hands now, and Possessi has the better mage hand, plus all his priest cards. Just a quirk of Hearthstone. Yeah. Well, Sometimes. you just have a better, better deck than your opponent. Of course, you get to discover their deck, so when you do get those crazy um, operative starts, this is going to happen. 
and I scream with his face in his hands. Just realizes, wait, no, unbelievable. Really? Okay, Wait, fine. wait till you see my other two cards. <laughs> yeah, Scream trying to work out exactly how to get around this, but he's not Psychic Scream, he's just Scream. So he's going to have it to do. And possessing, you just start gaining health, making minions. Do you just have to play Alex Straza offensively? I don't see another line of play, honestly. It's just all miserable otherwise. Good identification here from Scream that actually I thought I wouldn't be in trouble, but I am, so I've got to sort it. <laughs> that Twilight Acolyte is going to make quick work of that Alex Straza. can even be played with a bookworm if necessary to get rid of it, which then is going to translate into some interesting water elemental lines. The cool thing about Syndragosa in the mage deck is you're able to ping the zero ones to get a water elemental later yeah. in the game, so you can actually generate additional power. Time. Yeah, especially if you've got Jaina in your priest deck. That solves the Syndragosa problem. Yeah. I wonder it's if, crazy. You, if you keep Bookworm for the other Doomsayer. I don't think you do because I mean, you've got Crazed Alchemist. I think if you, you're now in the position where you can Crazed Alchemist the next one. Like it doesn't matter what you're crazed alchemist, right? Like you can just go face with everything, and as you said, you know, crazed alchemist the doomsayer. So I think you just want to put stuff on the board in this turn. Um, but he's trying to set up a situation where he Cinder goes as a board. I think as like a backup plan. That'll do it. Yeah. Polymorph though, he's going to save. I talked about this earlier. Save polymorph. It's a guaranteed water elemental down the line. Got to watch his health total. I mean, making this water elemental is re resilient is extremely strong. Yes. A little bit of a positioning error on the meteor, and he recognizes it as he, as he says, a fatal mistake. Good way of tipping off your opponent that if they've got meteor, how to play it? Because he wouldn't know. Yeah, he, d he doesn't. Know how to play <laughs> I think meteor. he might how, well know. How do you play meteor? What even is meteor? Is that yeah. a card? Yeah. The scream does have the clear. The issue is, of course, well, there's not much follow up. If your opponent has some, then you fall back behind. So I wouldn't mind seeing a Jaina in double trade here just to start compensating. And what that does is it lets you set up a good Blizzard and Meteor play so you can start generating elementals of your own. One of the things that makes Jaina quite tricky to play, I mean, it's not that hard. You, you play her when she's green. But one of the things that makes you put off that is you do have to miss a turn a lot of the time. Yeah. That's why the, the, the hero cards do give you that little bit of armor to encourage you to play it. But because she costs nine, she does cost a whole turn. And it's quite often scary that you're just going to get hit in the face the next turn. But he gets it. He gets her down there. And that means that from this turn onwards, he always has that stuff in his back pocket. No, there can be some shifting around of the minions by Possessi if he wants to, as he's able to get himself a bit of protection against... Yeah, I want to see this Syndra goes come and take game over. He can, he can even bump into his 5-6 into the Water Elemental and ping and get himself a second Water Elemental. Yeah, he can also... Because that's going to require an answer. The issue with giving your opponent 0-1s to ping is that they get Legendaries too, and that's a backfire. So you don't, if you don't have to, I don't think you, you necessarily want to. Yeah, I mean, you could bump your Water Elemental into theirs and just cause a stalemate there while you win with Syndra Goza. But he feels that this is okay. I mean, you sort of know they have Meteor, or at least, like, in their deck, so yeah. that's a worry of yours, of course. But that Meteor is going to find a target, just the problem is it doesn't give you a minion from it. Not but sure Blizzard why he seems better. reticent to play a Syndra Goza here. I know he's playing around AoE, but you get two cards off it if they AoE you, so it's not like... It's not AoE, it's the ping that gives them an element. Sure. Yeah. yeah. They're always going to get one anyway, that's the thing. It, it, the maze just always gets one one way or another. At least when they've still got four cards in hand. And again, I said early, you know, sometimes it just comes down to the priest getting Jaina. Yeah, there you, you go. I mean, this is pretty much, and it's almost, it's not as uncommon as you think, because they generate sufficient amounts of draconid operatives that, like, one match in ten comes down to a Jaina mirror match when the priest is involved. Yeah. Which I mean, is just weird to say, but. One mistake I've made with mage matches in the past, and that's what this is now. It's just one's got minions and one's got spells is you can come back if you're the the one miles behind. It, it's difficult, but you can get a good legendary or you can clear somehow or half clear into an Azoth. You, you can get back into it. That's going to be a very tall task here for, for Scream. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's got less cards, less value. 
doesn't really have the the minions that he wants. Even if he's able to clear this board, then he follows up with the Pyros. This Polymorph into Pyros is a, is a big deal. He saved this Polymorph a long time. Um, and th this is one of the very good targets for it. Uh, the Curator here, I think, is a little bit more interesting because, again, the odds that you clear the board with a 7 cost slash Flame Strike, Firelands Portal, whichever one it is, is actually rather slim. So it's a lot safer to go for the minion development. And I think that's even reinforced by the draw that he makes exactly at this specific moment. So his instinct is to Polymorph. It's my instinct too, but there's lots of other good plays out there. The thing is, you're not just polymorphing this one, you're polymorphing the one that comes back from Nazoth as well. And he's just wait, making sure he thinks he's got enough tempo to be able to sort of have a, a holding turn. He doesn't think he has, he's just going to go for it with Syndragoza. And yeah, ping away. Like, ping one of my naught ones next turn, see if I care. Is how he's setting this up to be. Not the legendary you were looking for, Hobart. Grapple hammer, something like that. Yeah, I mean weapons. What? He was a card that sort of people who didn't have all the cards played in Pirate Warrior for a while. Well, it was good initially. I think people were experimenting with him early on, and then it just sort of faded away as people realized. Fire War Axe got nerfed. No, this it's. <laughs> <laughs> it took <laughs> me three months to realize <laughs> that the two had changed to a three, uh. and. He just never seemed to be quite good enough, and definitely not the card you're looking for in this match. Well, Dragon's Fury could hit for 7, and you kind of need it to at this point. And if it does, then you can kill the Syndragosa, get a Water Elemental, maybe get something of an initiative on the board. Drawing the Flame Strike feels miserable as a result, though. It hits for 4, though. does allow him to get a Water Ellie, but at this point, a Water Ellie is not going to be enough. Kazakus may be useful later, but it's probably not useful now, although we've seen... I think it's probably enabled. It yeah. is, yeah. We saw we saw um, an Ink Master played early. Now we're going to see Kazakus. Not a single singleton deck was played today. Yet. Yet. There were a few in the qualifiers. One or two Kazakus Priests. Interesting. <laughs> Strangely enough. They tried. <laughs> at least they tried. <laughs> yeah, they hadn't been nerfed at the time, so they did quite well out of it. And second Cinder goes are still to come. I like the way the, the hammer still hammers away, even though there's not a weapon in the deck or the hand or anywhere. I'm working overtime. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> we'll pay you. It sounds good. Yeah, it sounds like overtime work to me. All right, so... Scream going to try to get another elemental, cycle himself a free legendary on the back of it. Maybe more useful than... Nope. No, well, well, even less useful. That's actually, it could give, you know, fatigue. Okay. It gives him, like, a fatigue out in a very weird sense if it survives. Sure. I can buy that. Six cards versus, was that five at the bottom? Six cards at the top, anyway. It's definitely fewer than that for Possessi or the same. I missed the hover. And this is where... We're almost on a Deathwing game plan here for Scream. He needs that little zero one one to give him some crazy board clear. Yeah, the ice block is now completely useless as well because Possessi's not winning this in the next three or four turns, so it will be a fatigue kill through an ice block eventually. Yeah, this is really what it comes down to. Scream does have the Nazoth in the deck still, right? I so hope he went for summon two here. I, I yeah, not. he does still have the Nazoth, so he can get two more legendaries. Right, so that's the, that's the important part, is if he's able to get the, the Nazoth value... Tyrion's a good one. I mean, that's the Nazoth value, all right. It's going to get polymorphed, but... It looked like Nazad value. <laughs> well, it, it's good because it defends something else. Like, it defends the, the six-mana Pyros or something. And he may even play the... Actually, I don't think he's got time to play the Pyros first. But he'll want to play the Pyros first to try and bait that out. Except he doesn't know it's there. So Flame Strike with a ping gives you a little bit more, again, staying power. And it, that's a lot of staying power now. Now we're talking about pretty beefy boards. Because this is rather equal on both sides in terms of how, how solid the board is. Mm -hmm. So suddenly Scream may be turning it, turning it around if his, of course, Tyrion stays up. Yeah, it is interesting how it works. <laughs> Scream shaking his head. He's like, really? Another another Syndragosa man? You're doing this to me right now? Yeah, because he probably thought what you were just saying is that I've just about stabilized. Yeah. Uh, because these matchups, because you can't kill people quickly with water elementals, you do get a bit of time to come back into it as the other mage. And he has got more value left in his deck. And he may actually still be turning this around. He's going to opt for the Tyrion, rightfully so. 
but... Yeah, I mean, he can't predict the opponent's got two Sindra goes as a Jaina and a Polymorph. <laughs> and a Yogg-Saron! <laughs> if things go haywire for whatever reason... He hasn't played many spells, though. I've got a... I think he's played a sufficient amount. Okay. Yeah, no, he's played enough for this. Doesn't have to play more than about six spells to make this ridiculous. And I made the mistake earlier today of saying that 2016 Sottle had called and said, thank God we're not going to get any Yogg-Sarons. We might see one played. I don't know, man. Scream is on the back foot like never before. His Nazoth was looking cute, but it's no longer doing all that much. I mean, it's bringing out more value, but how long do you live for? Okay, well, that's a sizable... That's a sizable play, getting the Polymorph back. Now, the question is, do you play the Doomsayer? Or do you just... Because like, your yeah. opponent's Water Elemental is, in fact, frozen. Does it unfreeze this turn? Uh, I think he attacked with it, so no. But it I'm would not... be Nat in that case, then. Because if you Nat, then at least he's drawing more. Which is good for you. And you were right earlier. He's played the Nat as a chance to start the mill process. Is it going to come down to Yogg? I mean, there's going to be Kazakas first. Oh, he, did, he didn't take bring back minions. He took damage. It's Yogg time! And here we go! May the Lord of Death be with us. It looks like a full clear on something. Oh, no. no not the right target, boy. Wait! Whoa! The, dark the darkness <laughs> at this point of the game! That's a guaranteed trigger! Have some candles! That's going to trigger automatically! Oh, it's gone insane. Yogg's... Yogg's good! He's having his last moment in the sun. The darkness when the opponent has no cards almost is insane. <laughs> what am I looking at? I don't even know. Can Scream find time to play his Nazoth to have his own chance at insanity? He's still got at least two more legendaries himself if he can get there. I don't know what Fujitora and Luke are going to do tomorrow, but they're not topping this game. Lightsabers. We've already discussed it. Red right. versus blue. Luke on the blue side. Fuji on the red side. That's, the, that's what they're going to have to do to impress me, because so far, yeah. my mind is blown. Yeah, this has been both entertaining and good fun. How did Scream stay in this game? It happens. It does happen. Jaina on Jaina. No one can kill each other because there's just too much health gain on either side. Even the one that's behind. But the darkness! There's the darkness. It's taken over the screen. Well, we've got a technical problem. Yep. I cannot see the monitor at the moment. The darkness has definitely taken our candle. And we cannot see. We hope you guys can. So I'm going to keep talking while Noxious presses buttons. He's pressed the right one. And has reset the game. I think it's just a fluke. Yeah. I moved a wire and it came back on. But it's a fluke. So we don't know what's happening, but we do know that the darkness was about to be played and then everything went dark. You can't be serious. Not like this. So who's winning that game? I mean, the darkness is a 20. I, is there a polymorph left for... No, there isn't. Well, he's got water elementals to freeze the darkness until the end of and time. And he's got Nazoth to get two more legendaries. Right. Oddly enough, Scream's probably ahead. Even though we've been screaming ourselves about how Possessi's game's been going... He hasn't really managed to generate enough stuff. And that is the thing that happens with Jaina versus Jaina because the one that's behind doesn't die. So as long as they can preserve stuff as it's gone to 3 1 by the look of the screens. I'm not sure. Possessi was at two wins when we left him off. Scream was at one. So it was two and one as far as we knew going into this with Possessi having a chance at 3 to 1. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bummed out. I wanted to see the finish of that game. We've seen Yogg-Saron. I want to see the darkness as well in the same game because that's something that will never happen again. Ever. Except in maybe in Wild. Competitive Hearthstone? Or, I yeah. don't know, man. That, that was absolutely mind-blowing. And it just appears the stream couldn't cope with it. Something about the feed disappeared. Well, either way, that was an intense game. And, like, it came down to those weird draconid operatives stealing cards that had no business being in the priest deck.